Because of the law of constant composition, we know that the percent composition by mass of the elements in a compound are um, a way to identify that compound. And therefore, our calculation of the percent composition is a very useful thing. For example, let's say that you have the compound C6H12O6. This compound is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and we can cal calculate the percent composition by mass. It's, we're always going to assume by mass, um, that's the default unless you're told otherwise, of each of the elements. So we could say the percent carbon in this compound by mass equals. Now, you may recall that a percentage is, uh, generally speaking, the part over the whole times 100. So we want the part that is carbon over the whole amount times 100. Since we're looking by the mass composition, then we want the mass of carbon in a certain mass of this compound, and we can use our relationship to the mole to get a quick and easy number. Um, it wouldn't matter if we had a 10 gram sample of the C6H1206, or if we had a 20 gram sample, or if we had a 14.6 gram sample of the C6H1206 the percent carbon is going to be exactly the same. So what we do to make our math easy is we assume that we have one mole of the substance and we know how much the one mole would weigh, so that will be our starting mass for the substance because there are six carbons. We know how many grams, the mass that the carbons make up, and we can calculate our percent composition by mass very easy. So let's look at the numbers. We have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens add together. So one mole would weigh 180.18 grams, so that is the whole amount that goes on the bottom. The top is just the amount that is the carbon, and here it is, six times 12.01, and then I have times 100%. So punching it into my calculator, rounding to four sig figs, I have that the percent carbon, my calculator gives me 39.9933, so how about 39.99% carbon? We could go through the same procedure and calculate the percent by mass of hydrogen. The percent hydrogen is the part that's hydrogen over the whole amount. The whole amount is still going to be 180.18 grams. I forgot my grams here. The unit grams cancels in this ratio, so my unit on my answer is percent. The amount that is hydrogen, I have 12 hydrogens at 1.01. .01. And I find, after I multiply by my 100%, that I have 6.73% hydrogen. Now, technically, I should go out to four sig figs with this, in which case it would be 6.727% hydrogen. The sig figs in a percent composition by mass is a little squishy, if you will. Um, if I want to report the percent composition of each element, all three of the elements, I might pick, for example, to go to two decimal places on each of the percentages. And we'll see why in just a second once we do the percent oxygen. Now the percent oxygen in this compound would be the part that is oxygen divided by the whole amount. You'll notice I got the 96.00 because there are six oxygens. Once I punch that in my calculator, my answer is 53.28% oxygen. And so I have the three percentages of the three components in this mixture. And one thing you might notice is that they should all add together to give me 100%. And if I add all three of these, I indeed do get 100%. You can check the math yourself. This leads me to a, uh, a point based on the way this works an alternative way of calculating a percent oxygen once you get down to the last element being calculated is you can simply take a hundred percent minus the percentages of the other elements in the compound. If there's only one other element, it makes the math a little bit quicker. But essentially, if I take a hundred percent minus the 39.99 that is carbon minus the 6.73 percent that is hydrogen, I indeed get the same percentage of oxygen. And you can check the math on that. So that's my percent composition. Now, one thing to point out for this, this is the percent composition in C6H1206. If I were to go through the same procedure and calculate the percent composition of a different compound, but let me pick a specific one. 
All right, let me calculate the percent composition of formaldehyde. C6H12O6, of course, is glucose. This is sugar. CH2O is called formaldehyde. This is a preserving agent. If you've ever taken a biology lab, um, you might be familiar with it. It has a very distinct odor, and it's used to perverse preserve specimens. It's poisonous. You would not want to drink formaldehyde, but you, of course, do want to eat sugar. Sugar's good for you, right? All right, so let's calculate the percent carbon, the percent hydrogen, and the percent oxygen in this compound. And we'll do so by first, like we did with the other one, calculate the one mole mass, assume one mole of it, and then calculate the percent carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen based on that one mole of it. I'm going to do this kind of quickly. I'm going to get the numbers kind of quickly. You can check them. You can check them on your own. All right, as you see, we came up with the percentage of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These percentages are identical to the percentages that we got for our glucose molecule. Do you see why? Can you see what the relationship is between these two molecular formulas? Do you notice that this formula is simply the reduced formula of glucose? The formula for formaldehyde is the reduced formula for glucose, which means that you will have exactly the same percentage of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen because you have the same ratio of those elements. Now, here's the thing. Glucose and formaldehyde are way different compounds. They're nowhere near the same compound, but they do have the same percentage of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. For that reason, we have, um, you'll notice that if we take these into the laboratory and study them, we're going to end up with the same percentages, and that alone wouldn't tell us whether or not we have glucose or formaldehyde. We have a way of, of calling this. We have some vocabulary that we use um, with this topic, and that is the vocabulary of calling the empirical formula. The empirical formula, the empirical formula is simply the simplest whole number ratio of elements in the compound. So for formaldehyde, the empirical formula is CH2O. That is the simplest ratio of the elements in that compound. For glucose, the empirical formula is CH2O. They have exactly the same empirical formula. You're going to get exactly the same percentage of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in this compound. And that alone isn't enough to distinguish between these two. What distinguishes between these two is the molecular formula. The molecular formula is the number of each of the elements that participate in the molecule. And for glucose, the molecular formula is C6H12O6. There are six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens all bonded together in a certain arrangement. For formaldehyde, the molecular formula is CH2O. There is one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen all bonded together in a particular arrangement. And a little later in the semester, we'll talk about those arrangements. But they both have the same empirical formula, but they do have different molecular formulas. If you know the empirical formula of a compound and its molecular mass, its molecular weight, um, what everybody added together is, then you can find the molecular formula. Let's do one of those quickly. Let's say that you know the empirical formula of a certain compound is CH2O. You also know that the molecular mass or the molar mass or the molecular weight, I just did, said the same thing three times, the molar mass of the compound is 120.10 grams per mole. We actually do have instrumentation in the laboratory that allows us to get molar masses of compounds. We have ways to determine that. Experimental evidence would give us this value. We also have techniques and experimental evidence that would give us these empirical formulas. The empirical formula might be the molecular formula if it matches the molar mass or the molecular weight. In this case, it doesn't because the empirical weight the empirical weight is 30.03 grams per mole. We had this on the previous slide, um, adding up one carbon, two hydrogens, one oxygen. The molar mass, the molecular weight, is 120.10. Those aren't the same. But we know that the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of those elements. 
all we need to do is take this molar mass and divide it by the empirical weight, or to divide our empirical weight into our molar mass, and this gives us the whole number multiplier to determine what the molar mass is. Now this rounds, this is very, very close to the whole number four. Basically when you do this, uh, when you use this technique mathematically because of significant figures, you may not get exactly 4.000, but if you are within .05 of that whole number, you can assume that 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 difference is significant figures. And you'll notice that we are within .05 of our whole number four, and that means we literally have four times our formula CH2O. We're not going to leave it like this. We might write it like this. That would be an appropriate way to write it. Everybody would know what you would mean, but we're not going to leave it like that simply because we don't typically format it this way. We're going to write it like this. And this compound, C4H8O4, does exist. This compound is erythrose. All right, it is part of the sugar metabolism. This is a biology thing. All right, but it is a legitimate compound that has four carbons, eight hydrogens, and four oxygens all bound, bonded together in a certain arrangement. So this would be the molecular formula based on my empirical formula and my molar mass.